uh, in the co-feature fight on Saturday night from Carson, California. We've got an interesting one with Carlos Adamas, uh, who is a fighter out of the Dominican Republic, 21-1, and against a veteran in Juan Macias Montiel out of Mexico. So this is a classic thing that we talk about all, always on the show. Rising prospect with an excellent record against a veteran who's been a former world title challenger. You see our odds. You see our over-under at 10.5. What about Adamas? Montiel, what do we think in the co-feature fight, Showtime Premier Boxing Champion Saturday, Dan? First of all, it should be an entertaining fight. I always say that first and foremost, if that's my opinion, because that means it's worth it's worth your time to watch the fight. Uh, these are guys that, that can make good fights. I think their styles mesh together. Uh, you know, if you're familiar with Montiel, uh, I consider him sort of like a journeyman type of opponent. You know, he's got five losses. He's fought some good guys, lost. He, uh, but he makes a good fight. He gives a great effort. He's part of a, of a, of a boxing family. You know, he's in that same family that produced, uh, I believe, his uncle, Fernando Montiel, who was a former champion in multiple weight classes farther down, you know, much lower in the weight uh, in terms of bantamweight and junior uh, bantamweight and flyweight. Um, he's coming off of a one-sided loss to the middleweight Charlo, who we challenged for the world title. He is the WBC champion. He took a beating in that fight. But, you know, as I've uh, quoted uh, the, 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 the great Larry Merchant from HBO, who did the boxing commentary for so many years, who's one of my dear friends, Charlo won the fight, but, Messi, but uh, Montiel won the event because he's the one that made it memorable, that made it dramatic because he had such heart and he put up such a great effort. Even though, you know, Charlo, you know, fought very well and won basically every round, the the display of uh, of will and heart from Montiel, you cannot forget. So the crowd was cheering for him. Uh, he lost the fight. Now, Charlo, has, he's the one I meant, has been injured. He, he, he was not able to fight this past June because of a back injury. You know, there's nothing on the calendar for him that I'm aware of between now and the end of the year. In other words, because of the injury, uh, they made the um, interim title in this weight class available to him also in the WBC uh, between Adamas and Ocampo. So they're going to fight each other. And Adamas is a guy who has challenged for a junior middleweight title. He lost a close decision a couple of years ago to Patrick Tesita. He has won three fights in a row. He's coming off the biggest win of his career against Sergei Devrinchenko, who has challenged yep. for the titles uh, three different times and is a very good fighter in his own right. And he scored a very solid victory against him and put him in position to have this fight. And, uh, you know, I expect this to be a good battle. Like when I was talking about the Fandora fight also, in terms of Adamas versus Montiel and Fandora versus Ocampo, these are not mega fights and they're not even like super high profile fights, even though they're for these, uh, you know, interim belts, but they're good, solid matchups that should be entertaining. And at the end of the day, if you're going to sit down on your couch or your screen or whatever and spend time watching the fight or gambling on the fight, uh, you know, they're worthwhile watching. And so I'm looking forward to seeing uh, if, if Montiel can produce the kind of, you know, big hearted effort that he did in the fight against Charlo and to see if Adamas, who is clearly the more talented fighter, he was an excellent fighter. The one loss he has is real, real close uh, to see if him sort of take the next step and, uh, and get the interim belt to put him in a great position. All right, you see Trey X there on the screen with us live here Fridays, 1 Eastern time, who says, hey, both guys coming off 10-month layoffs. Yeah. Does that, how much does that matter and factor into what you're thinking here? It doesn't matter to me. I mean, a 10-month layoff in boxing these days is like, you know, what do they say? Uh, 30 is the new 40. That's sort of like uh, <laughs> it does a 10-month ten, ten layoff. I think is it's the other way around, but I know what you Whatever it about. is. It's, I mean, 10-month layoff is not a great thing, but it's in, in today's day and age, particularly at this level, fighting in in uh, televised fights, in, 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 some, in quasi-title fights, a 10-month layoff doesn't mean anything. These guys come in shape. And the gym. it's the same for both guys. Yeah, it's exactly. Not like one of them's out for 10 months and the other one fought three or four months ago. It's you're, the if you're same for they're coming off, you know, one guy's coming off a two-year layoff, you know, then you might think about it. But, you know, I think the, the, uh, the, 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 the chatter and the talk about layoffs is vastly overrated, unless it's something crazy. You know, really long layoff. George Foreman off a 10-year layoff. I mean, then that's something yes. to talk about. You know, when uh, Vitaly Klitschko came back after a four-year layoff and in his first fight back fought for the WBC's heavyweight title and and uh, and and won it against San Peter in a brilliant performance. Floyd Mayweather coming off of a, you know, what, a three-and-a-half-year layoff out of retirement and and, uh, and just putting on a master class against Juan Manuel Marquez. You know, the layoff at that point, you talk about it. Ten months is nothing. And for example, next week we'll be talking a lot of heavyweights, Deontay Wilder, Robert Hellenius. They've both, both been off for a year. It's the same. They fought on the same card last October, so it's not uncommon is what Dan's point is. All right, let's go on the record on this. This is the co-feature fight, Showtime, Premier Boxing Champions. Dan, what do you like real quick and why? Well, I have in this fight, I have Adamas by a decision, uh, which means, of course, I'm taking the over. 
Uh, I believe that Montiel, he's got a, a, a great heart. He's going to stand up to it the way he did against Charlotte. He'll take a pounding. Uh, may have a few moments. Uh, not that Adamas is the most um, – he doesn't throw a million punches, so there won't be as much coming at him, I don't think, compared to what there was when he when uh, Montiel fought Charlo. But in the end, I think he's going to just, uh, uh, you know, be better skilled, be faster, uh, show that he's the better fighter, which, you know, I believe he is just based on the resume and based on my eyes of watching these two guys fight in recent mm -hmm. matches. And, uh, you know, in the end, we'll see, I would say, like a, like a, a competitive one-sided fight, if you know what I mean. In other words, the scores may end up being wide, but you'll see Montiel – certainly have a few moments and then uh, put forth a great effort. But in the end, you know, the class will prevail and uh, Adamas will have his hand raised um, in a 12 round fight. All right. You and I are actually going to agree. Let's go on the record. We both have, now this is going to freak Raphael out. We both have Adamas and look at the decision. Is it too late for me to change my mind if we agree? No, yeah. not yet. Not right now. We're locked in. Uh, Adamas plus 150 on the decision. So on the bet us line, they favor him more for the knockout here but they may not be taking into account Montiel's chin like you laid out before and how he took the punches from the big punching Jermall Charlo, the twin brother that's the middleweight champ. And again, by uh, implication here, if we both like the decision, we both like the over, 10 and a half rounds. So you see that as well, and that's laying uh, 105 here uh, to win 100. So we're going to double up, you and I doubling up, taking Adamas in the co-feature for this one on Saturday night.